Hello everyone. I welcome you all for today's session about introduction to electronics engineering. In today's session, we'll be covering a topic called embedded system module four, lecture one. I am your friend Mahadev S, assistant professor in the department of ENC at Dayanand Sagar Academy of Technology and Management. In today's embedded system, we'll be seeing about definition of the embedded system. Embedded system was a general computing systems and, and classification of the embedded system. An embedded system is a combination of computer hardware and a software designed for a specific functions. If you take a simple example, we can even consider our mobile as an embedded system because our mobile is a hardware running with the help of a software. So it's a combination of both hardware as well as the software. Okay. So whatever the systems, what we design, if it is a combination of hardware and software, we define that one as embedded system. So an embedded system versus general computing system. So let us see the difference between them. So general computing system, the word itself says it performs general operations or general computing means the general purpose operations we need to perform here. So first point, if you observe, it's a combination of generic hardware and general purpose operating system. As I said in before concept, so a general computing system, if you observe our computers or the laptops where it's a hardware running with the help of software and it is able to perform any kind of operations there. So we call these examples as general computing systems. Whereas in embedded system, if you see the concepts, what it says is that the combination of special purpose hardware and an embedded operating system for executing a specific set of applications. Here it varies for the applications where it has been used. Okay, so now if you take a simple example of a microwave oven where it is performing a specific set of operation of heating the food there. Okay, so where it is having an hardware and a software and the software controls what temperature it, the food has to be cooked. Okay, these are some of the examples what we can just give it here. So I just taken that. Now, what general purpose computing says that it is performing general operations with the help of general purpose operating system. So we call that one as GPOS. Whereas in embedded, it may or may not contain an operating system for performing the functions. Okay, if you take a simple example of remote also, for that operating system may not be required. Let us see the another example. It is the applications are alterable by the users. We'll take another example to understand here. If you take an example of our mobile itself, where it's the octa core processors and everything we say, and we have n number of applications stored in that. So if we are interested to use a particular application, we can install on. If we are not interested, we can uninstall. So the user can control this particular software there. Whereas in embedded system, it is pre-programmed and it is not alterable by the end users. As I took an example of a remote where the application is meant for controlling the television. If you take a simple television remote, its application is only meant for changing the channel sound system like that. The same remote cannot be used for any other applications. Or microwave oven. It is designed for cooking the food. I cannot use it as a refrigerator. So its program is fixed or predefined what it has to be done. There. So we call that particular thing as embedded systems. So performance is the key deciding parameter in selecting the general purpose computing system. As we say, when we want to purchase a laptop or a computer or a mobile, anything, we just look what is the performance about that one. And then only we decide to use it. Okay. Whereas in embedded system, performance plays a role. But along with that, it has some other applications like application specific requirements such as performance, power requirement, memory usage, etc. 
are the key deciding factors for the embedded system. Okay, now let us see another response. Less power saving management is there as it is general purpose. As you can observe in the computers or the laptops, the background, the software will be running there and it uses a lot of power for that one. Whereas in embedded system, if we have a power saving mode supported by the hardware as well as by the software. We can just control the power saver mode. If we take a simple example about mobile, if our battery is down, if we click a power saving mode, so we can extend the life or we can increase the span of the mobile duration for use until we get charged there. Okay, so power saving mode, what happens is that it stops all the background running softwares there. Okay, so that's one of the feature which is present in the embedded system. But in general purpose computer, response requirements are not time critical. So when we say response time, so whatever the operations we need to perform or what kind of a application we are using it, the response time is not critical means it doesn't affect much to the end user there. Whereas in embedded system, if you see the response times are very, very critical as it requires the caring. For example, when we took an example of microwave oven and we set the time for cooking the food and if you miss that, the food gets overcooked, okay? Or there may be chances of getting burned. So here the response time plays a crucial part in handling the embedded systems. Okay, so that's the important thing what we say because if you miss that response time, there may be effect of a human life or any of the animals there. Okay, so let us see the another difference. The general computing system need not be a deterministic in execution behavior, whereas in embedded system, behavior is deterministic for certain type of embedded systems like hard real time systems. Okay, so here the behavior of the particular system plays a crucial part. Okay, so these are some of the important differences what we have it between embedded system versus the general computing system. Now, let us see the classification of embedded system. So embedded systems are classified based on different criteria, like based on generation, what we can just say, Another thing is that based on complexity and performance requirement. Third one based on deterministic behavior as we have seen in the differences. And the fourth one is based on triggering. One by one, we'll just see it in detail there. So the first one, let us understand about classification based on generations. So the classification, when we say generations, the earlier versions and how it has been evolved from the initial version to the latest versions. So we call the earlier version as the first generation. The earlier first generation embedded system were built around 8-bit microprocessor and a 4-bit microcontroller. And if you see the hardware requirement here, it is of very, very less size there. So such embedded system process simple hardware and a format developing using assembly code. Because as we can just see, we have studied the simple concepts of microcontrollers, which are written in as a language. In the microprocessor 8086, we are writing the program in assembly language. Okay, if you take a simple example of all these application of the first generations are, we can see it is digital telephone keypads, stepper motor control units, are some of the example of the first generation we are again using this microprocessor and a microcontroller. Okay, and if you see the hardware combinations, now if you see the second generation, the second generation, the hardware combination is 16-bit microprocessor and a 8-bit microcontroller. It is doubled. The hardware size has been doubled there. When the hardware size is doubled, we can imagine the complexity is increased and power consumption is more from the previous generations. So if you see the second generation, the hardware complexity is increased and a lot of applications can be implemented there. And since the number of bits required for the microprocessor is 16 bit and 
it is making use of 8 bit microcontroller you can see huge applications some of the applications are data acquisition systems in scada systems what we are just using the second generation okay now let us understand about the third generation the third generation is based on the domain specific when we say domain specific the particular applications where we are using it depending upon that we can decide it here because the hardware complexity has been doubled because microprocessor is making use of 32 bit and microcontroller is making use of 16 bit and when it has increased the hardware complexity it has become more powerful and more complex than the second generation when we say specific applications like whatever i'm speaking now if i want to transfer it to the far distance it has to be converted to digital and then sent to the antenna to the far distance there so this processing is required here and to perform all these things we make use of digital signal processor okay so that's one of the thing what we can just say it's a domain specific i'm converting a log signal to digital signal and sending to a far distance or else when we say application specific integrated circuits we took an example of microwave oven where we are performing the operations of cooking the food or refrigerator we can just consider where it is being used for storing the food performing specific applications there okay so we have a application specific integrated circuits where everything has been kept on particular one ic and performs the operation and that it happens in the real time so the complexity is more here if you take a simple example of third generations we have robotics industrial process control embedded networking are examples of the third generation embedded system okay so now when it comes to the fourth generation the development of microprocessor and the microcontroller have evolved into the modern eras there now where we can call it as it is the designs are in such a way that it is done on system on chip we call the concept where it is the processor or the chip is reconfigurable or programmable according to the user requirement there or it has multi core processor inside this processor if you take a simple example of mobile itself nowadays we can see the mobile itself has a quad processor or octa core processor okay and when this number of processor is increased the performance is increased there but the complexity of the hardware also has increased so these systems also make use of high performance real time operating system okay and especially it is used in smart devices like digital cameras for the home security system you can see you know, traffic light signals where we are seeing the n number of traffic and who's violating the traffic we can sense with the help of the camera connected to the systems there now let us see the classification based on complexity so here we have three parts one is small scale embedded system second one is medium scale embedded system third one is large scale embedded system now let us study one by one in detail if you see the small scale embedded system the term itself says small scale it means it has less hardware compared to the newer generation when the less hardware we can either go for a 4 bit microcontroller or 8 bit microprocessor or a 8 to 16 bit microprocessor or a controller there and the processor size is very very less and this processor or the hardware is controlled with the help of a assembler either in the assembly language or we have an ide tool which converts cross assembler where we can use it from high level language to low level language and dumping the program to the chip there so the combination of this hardware and software complexity is very very small so we call this one as small scale embedded system okay or it may or may not contain any operating system sometimes for its functioning so if you take a simple example we have electronic toy as a small scale embedded system example there when we say electronic toy for the kids we can see it doesn't require a processor okay so we call these things as small scale embedded system now let us see the medium scale embedded system when it is medium scale the complexity will be much more compared to the small scale so if you observe the hardware configuration here 
So it is a 16 bit or a 32 bit microprocessor or a controller, or it is making use of some ASIC kind of an applications or DSP. All these things come under this embedded system. Okay. As the hardware has been increased, and when the hardware has been increased, we can see the software is getting also updated. Like we have high level languages called as C, C, Java, Visual Basics, real time operating system, RTOSMINs, debuggers, source code, engineering tools, simulators, and so many other integrated development environments are there, IDE, where both hardware and software complexity has been increased and their applications are also widespread for n number of applications there. As we can see, large number of operating systems are written with the help of C languages itself. Okay. So that's about the medium scale industry what we have. Now let us see about the large scale embedded system. When it comes to the large scale embedded system, by default, the term says it is large and the complexity is more compared to the medium scale. And you can observe here, the hardware has been doubled as you can just see 32 bit or a 64 bit. Nowadays, if you observe our computers or our laptops are of 64 bits processors, okay? And it is capable of performing risk processors or system on chip or scalable and configurable processor. As this configurable means what? Whenever we want, we can program it according to the user requirements and perform the embedded system applications. And since it is sophisticated, that is the reason we call it as sophisticated embedded system because it is configurable anytime or scalable to whatever the applications what we want. And they are used for the cutting edge applications that need hardware and software core designs where components have to be assembled into a final systems. If you take all these large scale embedded systems, these are especially used in the industries. And if you go to the any car manufacturing industry, we can see a lot of things done by the robotics, where it has been controlled by the large number of embedded system applications there. So they also contain high performance, real time operating systems for task scheduling, prioritizations and management. As we have seen, Recently, when we visited the Toyota industry, we came to know that every one minute a car is being manufactured. So if you imagine every one minute a car is coming as an output, so a lot of assembling work, everything is done by the robotics controlled with the help of large number of embedded system and the software. So these are some of the embedded system applications for the large scale embedded system. Now let us see classification based on the deterministic behavior. So when it comes to deterministic behavior, the terminology itself says how it behaves or what is the importance of that. So here, depending upon this behavior, we have soft real-time system. Another one is hard real-time system. When it comes to a soft real-time system, it means what soft, that not much important or not much critical we say. So if you miss certain task also, it will not affect the system, okay? That's the simple meaning of soft real time. Let us see here the concept, what it is saying. Missing a deadline may not be critical and can be tolerated to a certain degree. So it means what if you miss certain tasks to be completed and if it doesn't affect the device or any other persons, then we can say that kind of a systems are soft real time systems, okay? So for example, we can take a simple example of this mobile itself. If we get a call, during an emergency, and if you don't pick, that doesn't affect it. Or when a doctor is performing an operation, and if they have a call, so the priority is given to the operation rather than the call because that is not important. So this is an analogy what I just gave it to make you understand about soft real-time system there. Okay. Now, let us see the hard real-time system. So hard real-time means what? If you miss certain task or a deadline work and if it is affecting the system or uh, human life or animal life or financial losses, then we say all these things, these kind of systems as hard real time systems. So missing a program or a task execution deadline can have a catastrophic effect, especially in financial human loss of a life. 
like hacking the hardware of a system the financial crisis can happen okay so these are some of the examples of deterministic behavior of an embedded system classification the and the last one classification based on triggering so even triggering and time triggering are the two important parts what we have here and as it is saying triggering the terminology if you understand here even triggering so it happens during certain time or an event when it happens now when we say there are certain exams or in the engineering if you see there are exams every 3 months so we say it is a event so after the semester end the exam has to occur in order to see the or evaluate the students there okay so that is the events what we can just say or any function if you want to do in a house with the happy occasions we call that as events same kind the systems also has so activity within the systems example task running times are dynamic and depend upon the occurrence of different kind of an event okay now if you say if you set an alarm to our clock that i want to get up at 6 am early in the morning and if you just set up the time and keep it okay so what happens there it gets triggered i depending upon the necessity the person can get up or not okay so that is an event or a time trigger we can analyze here same way it is time triggered okay the example of event triggered if we uh, want to give it here um, we can take a simple example of a uh, an accident happening between the vehicles so we don't know whether it happens or not but when accident happens that's an event what had happened there and once this accident happened the airbag gets out to save the life of the humans there in the car so that is a triggered happen after the accident we call this one as event trigger and the processor sends that and the airbag is coming out so when the airbag is coming out we are saving the human life there similarly it is a time triggered time triggered is so many n number of examples we can just say like uh, setting up of an alarm if you want to get up early in the morning so once the time is reached the alarm is rung and the person can get up so activity within the system follows a statistical computed schedule that is they are allocated time slots during which they can take place and thus by the nature are predictable okay so the time we can just decide when this alarm has to be occurring there so this is about classification based on time triggered now let us see different applications of the embedded system where it is used as we can say see home apply applications are dishwashers washing machine microwave oven security system dvd etc are the or some of the application of the embedded system the embedded system application for office automation is fax machines copy machines like xerox smartphone systems modern scanners printers and for security face recognition fingerprint recognition eye recognition building security systems what we have airport security systems alarm systems it can be used academic as we can have a smart bone smart rooms calculators in instrumentation we have signal generator signal processor power supply applications in telecommunication cellular phone are the best example web cameras automobile fuel injection controller anti locking brake systems airbag system and gps as we took a simple example of airbag systems there for event triggering another one is entertainment so a lot of video games what we have aerospace navigation systems automatic landing systems we have applications industrial automations like data collection systems monitoring systems on pressure voltage current and temperature personal iphone palm top laptop computer desktop we can have a number of applications there for medical major applications here 
CT scanner, ECG, EEG, MRI scanning, glucose monitoring, blood pressure monitoring, a number of applications we have here. Banking and financial, which has revolutionized the world, especially in India because of UPI systems or ATM machines. We can just see due to Corona period, the UP has evolved. So we can see another application of embed system there. Miscellaneous general purpose applications like elevators, treadmills, smart card, security door systems, et cetera. We have some of the applications of the embedded system there, okay? If you have any questions, go to the comment section, write down your questions, I will reply to your questions. If you like my video, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon for further notification and share with your friends for their benefits. Thank you.